Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Sean T, and thank you so much for being here today. Oh my goodness, today you are in for a couple special treats. First and foremost, we're talking about cheese steaks. We're also talking about peanut butter and jelly and fried chicken, but in a great, great way. We have an incredible chef that has not only transformed himself, but transformed so many people and having a better relationship with food. And we get some really great recipe tips. I hope you guys are ready to fill your soul with Chef Kenny. What's up? This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Thank you so much for being on the show, Kenny. I'm really excited. We have a lot of things in common, and you have a lot of things <laughs> that I want to know about. Uh, so first and foremost, just tell us who you are, but tell us who you are and why you have the passion for what it is that you do. We got something in common. <laughs> hey. hey. We got something in common. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, keep it going. Give me something I can harmonize with, okay? <laughs> I got you, I got you. I so appreciate being with you, man. It's a privilege and an honor this, to be in your presence. It really is. Thank you. I enjoy what I do. I am a chef and a wellness coach in New York City. I have a passion for food. I grew up in a big Southern family. Where you come on, where we did our fried chicken and our collard greens and our candy yams with the marshmallows burnt on top, with a little bit of cornbread, with a corn pudding. Come on, I can keep going. I can keep going. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Before we even I move love food. forward, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> but wait, before we move forward, because I've been spe- I've been talking a lot about this on my podcast. Before we move forward. I need people to know that everything he just stated is exactly how I like to eat at Thanksgiving. And when I married Scott and, Mm -hmm. you know, I came, you know, you know, I'm from a black household and I came into, you know, a white household. We little mixed our little cultures together and I was making the candy yams like that. And I was making, you know, I remember my mom came and she was making a fried chicken. And for the, the first time my mom made fried chicken, Scott was like, what? Like, <laughs> what is this? I was like, ain't no shake and bake over here. Okay. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, that, 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 that volume. So it's funny enough that you should say that because it was that when you, when I, I lost 85 pounds. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that transition from um, unhealthy foods, heavily processed foods and coming over to grilled chicken breasts and vinaigrettes and oatmeal. Yeah. That wasn't going to kick it for a long time. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. A good vinaigrette in the salad, but come on. So really was about me. This journey was about bringing over those flavor profiles from my grandmother's food, like the candy yams. Let's take that for a second. I love candy yams, but those things will take you out of here. It is so much sugar <laughs> and butter and butter. <laughs> come on. And butter and, and butter, butter and butter. And butter. <laughs> And then some brown sugar. And so you got all that going on, and you really know good, a little thing that's put some um, Aunt Mama butter. Ooh, don't wait talk a minute. Do not wait, wait. quote me on that. No, but I don't no. do that. Kenny, for real, for real, for real. Wait, I got to, like, step in here for a second. Come on, come on. So first of all, I want everybody to know this is what you call a healthy relationship with food when we can smile about the things that are good that we eat. But wait a minute. I remember no one ever told me about the syrup, like the Antimama syrup on the candy yams after like they started cooking. I just, I thought I made that up, but to hear you say it too. Oh, really? Are you serious? I, I, no one ever did that in my family. It was always just the brown sugar and like, I think my, but butter and brown sugar and they made yes. the brown sugar, you know, caramelized or whatever. Yes. Well, sir, yes. Right. But I just, I remember I moved to LA and my mom was no longer there. Like she was back in Jersey. And so when I was making my very first Thanksgiving without her, I was like, I'm going to use some Aunt Jemima syrup. And I went in. But anyway, I digress. (laughs) (laughs) And to to cap that off, my little secret ingredient is that most people use vanilla extract to kind of balance Mm. it out. I use almond extract as well. That cuts right through the sweet potato. So you got that almond, that cinnamon, 
going on. Jesus Christ. So to your <laughs> yes. earlier question, that's what got me into this. It was that love for food and then bringing that over to more healthy food items. And that's what I teach my clients right now about creating a space for the life you want. What does that look like? I know that so many people when it comes to weight loss, I know certainly myself that, you know, we get certain information through media, through people, blog posts. And what came through for me when I was overweight, Shanti, was uh, take the skin off a chicken breast, uh, don't drink soda, and eat, and eat a salad. And then I found myself trying to lose weight at a Wendy's. I took the skin off the chicken McNuggets. I got mm. a lemonade, and I got a side salad, and then I add dressing. This isn't about, you know, making those things bad. But it was just about a mindset about what knowledge, college educated, Big family, Southern family. So this isn't about, you know, economic or social kind of presence about how you believe about food, but those habits are formed at home. And so not having that conversation at home does what? It creates the world and and eating poor. Yeah, but speaking of home, let's talk about home and and why food is important. Because I think with today's society, and first I want to say thank you so much for taking a stance to help people understand how to eat healthier in a healthier way in terms of their mindset. But I think the foundation of why food is important, especially at least in certain cultures. I know I have a lot of Italian friends. I have Turkish friends. I have Jewish friends. I used to go to Saturday, Friday night Shabbat. And, you know, let's talk about where you're from and who taught you how food is important and why it's important just in the culture, even if you take the quote unquote healthy side out of it. Got it. Food is love. Food is love. And my grandmother gave me that at six years old. I was hanging around. I love being around food. I like the smell of food. (laughs) That's why I think I subconsciously did it. So that love of family and um, my grandmother, I was in the kitchen and she said, if you're going to be in this kitchen, boy, you're going to have to help me do something. And she set my butt in front on a chair, gave me a brown paper bag and made me break up the bread for Thanksgiving turkey. And it was the first time that my hands touched food and bread and then to later see that bread turn into a stuffing that went into um the um, the turkey and to see everybody enjoyment around it and how it brought family together and people together i was like it it implanted on me right then in that moment seeing the happy and the joy the food what the food brings and that's what it is such joy and in my family food was already always after church church meant something sitting around the table still meant something like, like, I'm sure with you, like, how are you going to find out what's going on with your auntie? Who's sick? Who needs rent money? Who got broke <laughs> up? Who go <gonna> fight? <laughs> who, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, how are you going to do that unless you sit around the table with the elders and the kids and have this conversation about what's going on? And I miss that so much. That, that's in my spirit. And I feel like right now, so many millions of people love their family. We're trying to show up for ourselves. But please don't um, ever discount the ability to sit around a table with all the devices off and connect with each other. And food allows me to do that, allows us to do that. I love that you talked about that because just this year, we started with some of our online communities, Wednesday night family dinners. And so we would send out a recipe, everyone would make it, we would hop on Zoom and just kind of talk and chat because there's there's a couple of things that happen, as you know, at the dinner table. First, you get to catch up on the family gossip, which all of us kind of like have enthralled ourselves in once in a while. But then if you and I know you've seen this, too, especially in what you do, when people gather around the table, especially in social settings, like, you know, especially in New York City, like a city like that where you meet up. You know, people are more apt to eat healthier, too, you know, and, and we realize that people they have accountability when they're sitting around a table and they they watch a little bit more what they eat i practice still enjoying the process but um so yeah i just think that's really cool but i want to i want to before we get more into that and how you are transforming people you know you gained 85 pounds and we have a very similar story in that i gained 50 pounds and everyone know I went to college I had a food card I no longer had to ration what I ate I just swiped and ate and swiped and ate what was your process of gaining that weight and you know and then I want to dive into a little bit more about how you actually you know got healthier again right that process for a long time for me I know now after years of 18 years of therapy <laughs> what is about yes. now but before yeah yeah therapy was the best thing that ever happened to me 
taking it seriously and going, we can talk about that. But initially it really was, it stemmed out of my father. My father, um, we would always sit around the table, my mom, my sister and I, and we would sit around the table and have these meals and, you know, he get the big piece of chicken. You know, the black men get the big piece of chicken in the family. <laughs> yes. And I, he was the breast meat. And I don't even think he liked breast meat. And then he would give me the food. You remember that commercial, Mikey eat anything? And so he would give me the food and I would eat it. And my family would laugh, like, look at Kenny. That was a joke then. Mikey eat anything. Kenny eat anything. And I kind of built my identity around that. And then all of a sudden, my dad was went to jail. Mm. And he wasn't there. And as we would sit around the table, it felt a little different and I think subconsciously what I did bro is that I took that in the food initially made me feel closer to him because it made me eat and then it allowed me to hide mm. and um you couple that with just bad eating habits as I got older and 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 surrounding and circle um you know people we love but you know everybody no one was really tapping me on my shoulder like Kenny why are you gaining so much weight mm. no one said that you know what I mean? Maybe out of politeness, thank God I got good Southern folk around me and good Southern folk out there and other body. But yeah, no one really tapped me. It came in a little joke. You know how it happens, man. Oh, you're getting thick, boy. Oh, yeah. you're a preacher. You look like a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, you know, also, there's also been like stuff in our culture where, especially when women would lose that weight, like when men gain weight, it was like, yeah, he's thick. Oh, you know, whatever. But then when you yeah. lose the weight, it's like, oh, she getting too skinny. And you're kind of like, wait a minute. So do you want me healthy and around for a while? Or do you want me just to be overweight and eat? Because, you know, because you're not because you're not eating healthier. So, um, but yes, it is very true. And I can sit there for a second. Ain't nothing wrong. And I keep it very real. Ain't nothing wrong with a little, a little, a little extra thickness. You know what I'm saying? Like we all like that. I'm a thick guy. You know what I mean? So I'm okay with it. Hey, right. But you know, in a sense about checking myself, it really wasn't. And as we go forward, it really wasn't about the food. It was about what I believed about food. What do you believe mm. about food? I had no belief around the food. You know what I mean? If we, we go to work and we know many, many popular companies, we know their motto, we know what their aim is. But when you ask somebody, and I, and I didn't, I had to realize this, when I asked myself, what do you believe about food? I had no belief. Mm -hmm. I had no structure, no system around the way I ate food throughout my day. And that showed up in my weight. So it wasn't about villainizing food because I pretty much eat the same food. I love my fried chicken. I would do four, chi four chicken wings and french fries and a soda on a Friday night when I'm alone. Hey, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know what that feels like to kind of enjoy that, but also, also seeing that food as my main source. Why was I eating so much? And mm. therapy helped me. And it really was a raw, just that little teeny thing. And that's what I want to tell people out there, your viewers, forgive yourself for what you believe your life should be. You got to re release the outcome of it because we hold on to the pressure of that. And I held on to pressure. What if my daddy was around? What would this would have happened? And, and I had to change the story in my head about, yeah, I can deal with that daddy issue and that, that, that tear that it does on the soul. Okay. That's over here. I can, I can, you know, I can set that down because I know what it is now. I've described it. I put a language around it. But now as we talk about the food, what's the food about? Can we, have, can we have that conversation, Kenny? Let's talk about it. Okay, <laughs> well, well, right. I like, well, I, like, I like to eat. Yeah, okay, we all like to eat, huh? But after that, what is, it, what is your thing? Okay, well, I believe it should feed me for life. Who should mm. feed me for life? And when you believe that, when you walk in that, your actions and behaviors reflect that, and the food on your plate reflect that. I feel like you probably have an incredible way of guiding people you know transitioning them from just eating I, I, I'm gonna use the quote unhealthy but I try not to use that so harshly like eating all just the fun foods and yeah. the foods that you ate when you grew up foods we enjoy, transition. Foods, foods we enjoy. foods we enjoy foods that feed us for life right foods yeah. we enjoy like so what is what is the process because I know there are so many people, so many of my listeners that may have been working out with me for years and may have done certain nutrition programs, but they still beat themselves up, even on that Friday night when they want that fried chicken. Like if I'm going to say when you and I hang out, we're going to eat some fried chicken. It ain't going to be no finish the fried chicken and oh my goodness, I ate that. It's going to be finish the fried chicken and be like, 
yo, that was good. Where are we going next week? Right. So how do you get them to, to, how do you transition them to feel like they can lead a really healthy lifestyle, but still enjoy that because that's a lot of people struggle. Yeah. The first thing when my clients come to me, I ask them about, if I ask you or someone asks myself or anybody, what healthy meant, we will all have a different opinion about what that is. So it isn't about healthy. Step away from that because we get different signals. When I ask you, are you well? How are you doing, Shanti? Are you well? And you take a breath almost for a moment. And you, it's almost like your body does a scan. Am I well? How's my family? Is family life okay? Are me and Scott okay? Is my business doing well? Have I showed up for myself this week? You kind of do it. And then when you answer somebody, you're like, yeah, I'm good. I'm well. And that also includes your health and your body and how you feel about yourself. And if there's any discrepancy in your energy, then we got to address it. And so mm. the first thing I do when the client comes to me, I was like, okay, we're going to approach this three, three ways. Because it seems like clients came to me and they wanted a quick fix. Give me the smoothies that you do. I love your smoothie, Chef Kenny. I want to eat healthy and I'm only going to exercise this. And you start negotiating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So the first thing I ask them to do, we take them through um, body, soul, and sound. And that's kind of special what I do with my one-on-one clients because I approach health from a different way because it's the music that I listen to when I wake up in the morning that sets my mm. tone. That's right. It sets my tone. Why am I turning on the news? No offense, because I love my morning Joe. I don't know, plug there. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I love my news, but that can't be the first thing to go into my spirit first thing in the morning. So it's about the music. Then I, I have them consider, would you even consider just changing up the music in your life? And they say, you know what? I felt better in my energy today because I changed the music. All right, now let's deal with your body. What are your systems that you have around your habits? I don't know. Well, let's make it easy. Don't try to say, I'm going to go eat some more greens and I'm going to try to run four days. I'm going to check Shanti out. Stop it. Let's make it very basic. Let's start small. What do you do every morning? Well, I get up out of bed. You know, I brush my teeth. I get my coffee. Well, in that process, could we add a new system like making a smoothie while your coffee is being made? And that way, after your coffee has been made, you can, you can enjoy that pleasure. But now the smoothie is ready. So you can drink that while you're in the shower before you get out the door in your car. Just that little tweak about adding uh, smoothies to your diet in a real way, in a system type of way, can change everything. They were instrumental in me losing weight because my mom was always worried about, what am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? How did I die? So you turn in one thing about eating poorly and then switch to now being obsessive about, I can't eat this many carbs. I can't do this. Right. No, just go towards color and put systems in place like the smoothies. Uh, before we even go that, let me go back for a second. I started them out with asking them, what do they believe about them? Mm. It's amazing that we don't know what we believe about ourselves. And so I walked them through these three simple questions about what do you believe about you? What do you believe is possible for your life? Because if you don't believe you're possible, it's going to keep showing up in your behavior. Mm. So let's write down Technically, what do you believe about you? How do you feel when you're eating healthier foods? Write that down. What does that feel like? Do you feel powerful? Do you feel like you can take on the world? Do you feel energetic? You know? And when you have these foods, how do you see your life? Are you happy? Are you full of joy? Are you working in your business? Are you taking in more friends and, and living a fuller life? That's what I ask them. And then what health, when you're consuming healthier foods, you know, what do you think about? What systems do you have? And when they sit down and write that and put, I believe in front mm. of it, I'm going to give you my belief statement. I believe that when nutritious food is at the center of my life and my actions, life is better. Mm. You know, it's really amazing. There's three things that what you said that are incredible. One, starting your day knowing that you are setting a foundation. So the first thing is like people's, the beginning. I love how you literally reset people. It's like, wait a minute, let's stop. And the first thing is not even about food. It's about no. what you're feeling, that music, you know, what you're feeling. And then the second thing I love, the second thing comes something you enjoy, like your coffee is your, your free time. And then you can enjoy the foundation of the first thing you put in your body. Third thing is very similar to what I talk about with fitness and you do it with food and everything you're talking about with food is you're like, how is this going to impact your life? Yeah. Not just 
your weight yes. or not just like what you're going to look like in a bikini, your aesthetics. Yes. It's how is this going to impact your mental health? And right. I know clearly you having gone to therapy for so many years, you know how important it is, the correlation between the food you eat and probably why you're eating it and how it affects your life. You got it, man. It really, I've, you know, I've, I've taught classes at, for insurance companies and private companies and, and personal. And it seems like food is not the issue. Everybody, this surprised me, everybody in my cooking classes can cook. They can cook. So they have this idea about what healthy food is. So I want y'all to, if you want to eat the chocolate, eat the chocolate. I love my ice cream on Friday night. I did it in my bed. It's been a good week. I sink in my bed. And I was like, you really going to enjoy this, ain't you? And I was like, uh-huh. And I eat my little pane of ice cream. And I hold my little spoon like this, like a little kid. And it's my <laughs> moment. It's my moment for me. And nobody gets it. But I promise you, cut them lights out come Saturday morning. If it's a Friday, I'm getting up and I'm going jogging. Mm. Because that's how I show up for myself. It's not about, oh, I'm going jogging because I need to lose this weight to get over that ice cream. No, that moment's gone. Let it fly. Eat the food, eat the food, get back to your practice. And, and that's how I just show it for myself. It's not magic, but it is purposeful. It's like, it's one of the things that is a little frustrating for me too, when people fight their way through exercise. You know, you're fighting your way through exercise because you're feeling guilty of what you did on Friday night. And you're like, no, like Friday night was a party and Saturday night, I'm just, you know, focusing on my fitness or focusing on my health. And I think people need to really separate those two things. Yeah, I know if you go, like I went on vacation and even I worked out on vacation, you know, I drank a lot. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of French fries, so you know, <laughs> but, but I didn't I actually, and like, okay, you know that if you're eating things that aren't necessarily the best for you, you know what it does. But I didn't come back from my vacation to say, okay, I need to reset and restart. I actually didn't even think about it. I'm like, okay, like I'm back to doing what I enjoy doing in my fitness. And I wish people would. And I think what that does, and, and maybe you can touch on this a little bit, is not allow people to either let that quote unquote fun, joyful eating carry on to the point where it's unhealthy or stop eating fun and joyful at all. And then for like three months, you're like, I'm going to eat clean, 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 clean. And then month three, you just get so frustrated that you just binge, you know, and then that becomes a whole little mental struggle. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, let me go back. Let me, let me cut back and I'll remind me to come back here. Cause I think this is okay. a great place. Uh, when it relates to exercise, especially when I was overweight and in the gym and feeling a little embarrassed to go over to the weight side because I was overweight and stayed on the cardio side with my little plastic outfit. Now we know you're not supposed to do that. Wow. But back then, I did it. And so just the what came to me in my spirit is and just to say is about the breath. What happens while some, I ask some people, why don't you like to exercise? And they really can't explain it. And for the most part, I get, I don't, I don't like sweating, which I think, okay. But then it's, I think it's about taking a breath and you know this to be true for what you do so well. When you're exercising, you aren't any place else. You are breathing. You're in it. Your heart is racing. You're checking your breath. You vary the 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 area and the, and the surroundings to become a little brighter. You know what I mean? If I'm trying to describe it like techno colors because you're just like <laughs> in it. In you it. know what I mean? <laughs> and I think um, – with some people, if I, if I can offer this, if we can look at this because I find this to be true, is that being that present, you start to look at yourself, you start to doubt, you start to feel bad, like, how did I get this big? Mm. And then in the next time I go around, your mind, your mind doesn't want to do that. It just want to go back to feeling good like you did yesterday before we had to be that present in the breath. And I just want to say, if you can just continue to take the breath through your process, you will come out on the other side, as they say in church, pure as gold. Uh-huh. Yeah, so right. come, <laughs> come on here. So, you know, as it relates to the food, um, you know, you, everybody has this bio individuality. So I can't give one thing that works for me. What works for me sort of is I built in my system five days during the week, during the work week when I'm moving, when I'm most about, it's going to be when I eat the best because I want to make sure I have the energy so I can show up for that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go to bed, even though people tease me, I go to bed at 930, 10 o'clock. But I wake up at five o'clock and I got more out of my day. I get more out of my day when I wake up earlier. So I did that system. And somehow my mind says, woohoo, 
Friday night. <laughs> go get you some chicken. <laughs> go do that. Go have your red wine. No judgment. You know what I mean? I ain't counting peanuts and how many cashews. I mean, and I just, I take in that moment. And so it's built in my mind. Do what you've got to do during the week so you can enjoy yourself. Instead of delay Saturday, you really have to learn that. And it's okay. You just start step by step. If one day you saw the money, you know what? Today, I'm going to make sure every time I eat something today, there's going to be a raw salad on my plate. Something's going to be raw. And you start there. And then the next time you say, you know what? For three days, I'm not going to take the sugar with, the, with my coffee. I'm going to try it black. And what mm. happens is you start to create these different habits that you didn't know about yourself in your food habits because you never gave yourself a clean palate just to start. You know what I'm saying? You never really did that. And I promise you, if you do that, you'd be like, you know, like, for example, a lot of people say, oh, I don't like vegetables. My client, look, chef, I'm going to take all your recipes. I like the smoothies and all, but I ain't doing no vegetables. They just literally tell me what they're not going to eat, which is a great way to start a consultation. Here we go. So, (laughs) (laughs) right. Right. All right. You're not going to eat vegetables. But, you know, that little mindful trick. I know for me, for example, I didn't like Brussels sprouts as a child. Hated Mm. them. I got up on the table. I remember, I, th- I don't know what I thought they was, and I ate them, and it was, it was hate at first bite. And then <laughs> it, it, was, it was. I did not like it. And then growing up, baby, let me bro those things down and put mm. some little lemongrass on that with some fresh garlic and burn it at the top of the grill and then put some little sriracha sauce around it and some ginger. That Brussels, part. Brussels right sprouts has transformed. <laughs> You understand? So what I always tell my clients, maybe as a child, you didn't enjoy a process or food because some habit or some kind of um, uh, beliefs were set around the food. If you do this like the family, then your family. You ain't Southern unless you're eating like this. Oh, you ain't eating real food. Whatever kind of language you got, got created in your eating habits, you get a chance to press reset. I'll give you one more example. I love peanut butter and jelly on Wonder Bread. It has to be... So I, <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. I have not had a peanut butter and jelly on Wonder Bread in about, I mean, at least, at least 25 years. Like, I mean, it just, and so when I meet you, I'm like requesting, that's what I'm requesting. People probably think like, oh, you know, Chef Kenny got all these amazing, I want, I want the fried chicken. We can talk about that. I, and there's nothing better than a peanut butter and jelly that someone else makes. First of all, you know that too. So I'm just putting in my request in now uh, because <laughs> I'm probably going to want to have two. And I like it cut, you know, like angles. <laughs> okay. So your mouth will go straight to the jelly and the saw part. Yes. Right. <laughs> okay. I get Anyways. you. I see you. I, you. I get you. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. You can continue with your peanut butter and jelly. So we just talk about those, those systems. The peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is in my cookbook, because that's how much I love it. I put a version in that. But I, uh, it really was for, in talking about just removing certain things and watching how it could connect it all. Gave up the peanut butter and jelly because I love white bread, so I stopped white bread. All right? Mm. Here's the thing I didn't realize. Because I was eating peanut butter and jelly, no offense to milk. You never know who's going to be a sponsor. Hey, everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> with that said, it made me, I didn't drink milk. Because I used to drink it with my peanut butter and jelly. And because I stopped drinking milk, I stopped eating um, sugary cereals. So changing that one thing about me stopping white bread made a chain reaction to the other things that I eat. So it made me sit back and say, what else in my life is not working for me Mm -hmm. health-wise versus damning everything? I still want my fried chicken. I want my Asiago cheese. I want my crackers. You know, uh, you know, but I now I just snack differently. And so that's what I offer everybody. Just kind of Give yourself a reset. I love that. It it, kind of answers the question that I had before, which is, you know, when people start running hard in one direction, because there are people out there who, I know people who are like, only eat healthy, blah, 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 blah. But then they're also the same people that's like, oh, like I kind of let myself go a little bit. I'm like, you're preaching like 100% health, but I just don't, I personally don't think that you can do that because everyone has a vice. Some people like wine, some people like French fries. And so mm-hmm. I think having a healthy relationship with food, which I talk about is a lot, is fine, but not going too far with just eating a fried chicken and not going too far with not 
with just eating, you know, the raw veggies that and middle, only the healthy smoothies. That middle place. We live in the middle, don't we? Mm. We live I mean, we, we can't we can't always live in extremes. No, no. Because it's exhausting. Uh, Back to the spirit. No matter what we keep talking about, we can talk about food and structure, <laughs> habits and habits, being in love and everything. It's still going to keep coming back to you. What is your spirit doing? And I, normally, I'm going to be real with you. For years, I didn't talk like this because I realized that on a certain level, it excluded a certain type of people from listening from you if you went spirit. You know, usually people tend to think about spirit in a sense of just um, church or chanting, or spiritual life or nature and everything, all right? But they all can live in the same space, all right? So that experience that you create. So now it's free me up to be saying, if your spirit, and it's about healing the places in the soul, and I don't mean to be trite here, I really mean that, because mm. it's these little tears in our soul, and I keep having uh, clients come to me with situations want to lose weight, and I was the same way, but when we really get, I call it soul work, and I really do mean it, that it's soul work, because once you start to address that on a, on a soul level, not a churchy level, not somebody's interpretation, what is my inner feeling saying? What is my North Star? What am I feeling? Because I promise you, everything just lightens up. I'm a, li- I'm a nicer person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's a choice. And that's what I'm trying to say. And people get so frustrated. And if, if I'm coming across anybody like, you know, I used to hate those commercials just like, oh, I lost 20 pounds and I feel great. I hated those. <laughs> because mm-hmm. what was the process in between? Thank you for sharing your process because people believe you just always look like that. So what is that choice that you, you do that? And so one of the things I have um, them do amongst other things, my client is, how do you choose you? And I was like, oh, I choose me. I took it. No. How do you choose you? And when I really quiet them down, how do you choose you? Then they have systems around how they chose themselves, like drinking the water, like eating hey. the food, like okay. being able to cut the phone off and say, hey, I need to fill me up, to say no to people, to be totally immersed in the moment with God and not have it be related to your level of anointing and your level of closeness to him just about this is between me and my creator. He made this. Mm. I don't have to have this whole excuse system around me for guilt. Mm. I don't have to have that around me. I really love how you, I, I, I said this already, but I just love how you take the messaging away from food and it really is and how food fills your soul and just, it really defines the relationship that you have with yourself because you know, like I've said a lot of times, it's like your relationship with food with your relationship with food, but really the foundation of that is the relationship with yourself and not whether you care or care about yourself or care less about yourself. Yeah. It's, it's what's happening from the inner soul. Um, I could talk about that all day, but I do know I want to, I want to get back around uh, with the time we have left to food because okay. listen, First of all, we're going to tell everybody where to find all your information and your recipes and your book. But can you just tell me, like, I love when people say I have this type of food that I love and I have a healthier version over here. And I know you've probably done that a million times. So I'm going to put I'm going to put you to the test a little bit. Maybe Uh you have it. And if you don't have this recipe, you better make it up on the spot. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) You ready? You ready? Okay. You All right. So we spoke before about peanut butter and jelly. So I just want to start there. How do I take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I would love with Wonder Bread and make a healthier option of that? You would start with a light whole wheat bread, switch from peanut butter, which has a lot of sugar because it has to stay on the shelf, and go to a natural um, cashew butter or, or grind it fresh or almond butter. And then lay that down. And then what I do to add some nutrition to it, I add some bananas, fresh banana slice, and put that on top. Right? I ain't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> and versus, and I love my Welch's great jelly, but switching that out, because if you're going to put jelly, y'all, on your bread, you should see the fruit. If mm. it's a jelly, you should see the fruit. 
So switch from jelly and go to preserves. You want a preserve, a strawberry preserve, a, a grape preserve. All right, get away from the jellies. It's full of sugar. And you lay that down. And then I have to get a, just a little bit of butter in the pan. And I warm it up with a little bit of cinnamon on top of both sides. And I cut it in half. And I go in. And I let it Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, the next thing. <laughs> the next thing. So this is, I don't even know if you have this, but yeah. you know, you mentioned this earlier on in our in our conversation just about the salad. And yeah. so I have a friend who says, you know, start with a salad. But when we go to a restaurant, one of the most popular salads is a Caesar salad. It's like on, I would say, 88%, if not 95% of all menus. Right. But we all know that not all Caesar salads are healthy. So how do you take a Caesar salad that you may see at a store where you're like, mm-mm, and how do you make that Caesar salad a healthier Caesar salad? And you can add grilled chicken to it if you want. Right. So I can't remember the movie, man, but this is like, it's out of my head. It was like where everybody would get everything on the side. She was like, why is all your uh, or the condiments on the side? That's a big thing, but hear me, hear me out. So ask them for a Caesar salad, but hold all the ingredients on the side and get a balsamic um, dressing just on the leaves because what's, what's really going on is that the Caesar dressing is just coating it up real good and creamy. That's the part that you can't just stop, but it is loaded with fat and it tastes good. So go ahead and get it with the balsamic dressing so and put some salt and pepper. It's leaves, so season the leaves. People don't really realize that a little bit of salt and pepper or some um, um, fresh ginger helps to season leaves. That, you can eat that by itself with some balsamic dressing. And so then if you got the Caesar dressing on the side, eat the salad and then just dip it in the dressing. Let the grilled chicken be the grilled chicken on the side. And just so mm-hmm. by the time you're done, you're like, wait a minute, since I already had the dressing, since I'm tasting, let's take a moment. What I'm really getting to is, are you really tasting the food or are you just tasting cream or the mayo? You know what I mean? So enjoy the taste of the leaves. Enjoy mm. the taste of the grilled chicken that the chef was back there. It was like, you know what? I want to get this just right. I want to put some salt and pepper and some rosemary on this. I want you to taste the ingredients. So when you put the seizure on, you just kind of douse in the flavor. So just kind of just dip it in there, the little chicken and some leaves, and just get the flavor in your mouth. You'll eat less dressing. I promise you. I will say that every time I'm at a restaurant where – the server comes with the extra, you know, pepper, the fresh ground pepper. I'm always like, yes. And it's so funny because, you know, they stand over your table and they kind of do it. And it's always like this awkward moment of like how much you want to put on. And I just, every single time I count from 10, I'm, I tell them, I'm like, I'm going to count from 10 because I remember. And the reason why I started doing that is because I remember when I used to fly a lot before I had kids you know, I would be on the, on the flight and the, a salad would come and I would be like, oh my gosh, this tastes like dirt. And then I would just start putting salt and pepper on a salad and just like trying to really make <laughs> the leaves taste like something. So I love that you did that. I love that was a great uh, advice. Okay, my last, my last, this might be really tough, Chef Kenny. This uh-huh. might be tough. Are you ready? Give it, give it. Go ahead. <laughs> So I, I got to preface this story. So yesterday I was on my way to the barbershop and my barber, I've known him for 10 years. He said, hey, I was like, I'm running a little late. He's like, okay, cool. I'm going to run next door to the cheesesteak place. I'm going to get a cheesesteak. Do you want something? And I was like, no, not because I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to eat a cheesesteak because I just know like sometimes the cheese is going to hurt and whatever. And I don't want to feel, but is there a way to make a cheesesteak healthier? Yes. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know how much time we got, but I had a friend. We got time. Go ahead. Oh, because I'm going to give you some ingredients. A friend of mine said, he's like, I want you to make me a steak and cheese. I ain't never had a chef make one. So I'm going to make a steak and cheese like a chef. I had capers. I had two types of onions that I was going to caramelize. I had ribeye steak, you know, sliced very, very thinly. You ain't had a steak and cheese until you had ribeye steak. All right. And so I had that. I had some salt and pepper. I had some Asiago cheese and I had some cheddar cheese. And liquid smoke to add some smoke to it, okay? To beef it up, all right? And so I had this thing, and he came in, and he said, what's that? I said, I'm making a steak and cheese. He said, I want steak. 
and cheese. <laughs> you keep all that other stuff. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. I was like, well, first of all, don't ever ask a chef to just do something because they're going to bring their own interpretation to it. But one of the things I can't offer is that I have really gotten into eating one piece of bread. I used to, people who did that used to get on my nerves. Like, if you're going to order a burger, <laughs> eat the goddamn bread. <laughs> you're doing too much now. And it get, but I get it now. Just doing it open face and getting that thin slice of beef. Actually, what happens is you get this whole hero, because I'm from D.C. now. Now, we do our steak and cheese hero. And come on. And so that steak and cheese is good, and we load it up with the onions and the, and the cheese sauce. But mainly you forget that what you're seeing, something your spirit says, I spent my money on this, so I'm going to finish it. And you don't have to finish it. That's the first thing. It's a whole steak and cheese cut up in four parts. I don't care. You're still going to eat the whole thing. That's a foot long mm-hmm. steak and cheese you just took in your body. Come on here. So it's all good. So just taking that one piece of bread and then cutting that that quality meat, take the meat up a level because it has more flavor. Take the cheese up because it has more flavor because ultimately what you want is flavor. All right? Then add some acidity to it. It can be balsamic vinegar that put that little kick on the, on, on the, on the steak and that little bit of smoke to be smoky. And then you put some Asiago cheese on that and some caramelized onions that's been in brown sugar. You get away from needing this whole big thing and you get the focus on this really good, it. tasty piece of meat in front of you. Come on here. <laughs> I, I, I really love that because, I mean, it's true, just taking away half the bread, getting a healthier version of the meat is already like up-leveling what you're putting in your body. And it actually it actually eliminates my question, which is like, how do you make a healthy cheesesteak? It's like, let's just make it better for you and let's still make it taste good. And I just think that that's, that's super fun. All right. I have just a couple more things. And then unfortunately, I'll let you go because my mouth is watering right now. <laughs> but uh, um, what is your definition of trust and belief? The best is yet to come. Mm. And if I don't have that at the center of it, if I don't believe it, then they're just words. That's how, that's how I connect them. I believe that the best is yet to come. And so when I meet somebody, I'm present, not working very hard not to bring my old history there. So I'm present for it because I believe what you're saying is true. If a new opportunity comes up for business-wise, I try not to approach it with this woe is me artist kind of thing, like the torture soul thing and then triumphant. No. I want to accept that God is bringing this opportunity and believe because I've been praying on it. I've been mm-hmm. fasting on it. I've been meditating on it. And I've been attracting different people. What we doing right now, bro, I'm a trip when I get off of this because I attracted you. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. You understand yes. the connection through how we, I'm, I'm like, when people used to talk about that, I used to say, okay, I'm sure you still had a daddy that gave you some money. I'm sure it was easy for you. I don't have my files. I don't get the numbers that everybody got. Da, da, da. And you start going through the line. And then I just started to think, I believe it's possible. And I'm here with you. And I get mm. to do what I love and, and create. And it's just a healthier place to start. I don't even think I want to go back to the, to the non-trusting. Because where, where, where was that from? Because if you look back over your life and you think things over, this little old church song. When I look back over my life, and I think things over. Come on here. God has been good to us, man. So why not focus on the triumphs and then use that to feed the next opportunity and the next goal and the next meal and the next thing. And you piece that thing together and then you'll have life. That's the life you want to live. That's the legacy you want to leave to people. And I want to leave a legacy that says I was here. And not only was I here that I helped my brothers and my sister live a better and happier life through nutrition. The best is yet to come. I think that's probably the best definition that anyone has ever stated. So last but not least, tell us where we can find you. Do you do private consultations? Because I know for a fact there are going to be tons of people that are just going to be like really interested in following you and, and following your methodology of just the way you live life and make, you know, make food mm-hmm. a part of your mental health and your personal journey. Yeah, the private clients, I kind of tailor to what they need, but I really kind of put it under creating the space for the life you want. Because that goes, as you said earlier, beyond the food. So you come with me, we talk about how to live a happier and healthier life. Because for one, we start with defining it, what it means for you. So that's Mm -hmm. what I offer you as a client. In a sense of following me, I'm just going to be me. Sometimes it's political. 
Sometimes I just go with the Lord. I've, I've learned to just kind of let it come to me. Because when I try to do, well, you got to do one, two, three videos to do this. And then I, was, I, get, I, I get this. You know, I'm not interested. So no. I love that you start with, with the thing that you love, which is, which is um, nutrition and, and health and exercise. So I start your day with something you love. So I just really get people to this place of love. What do you love to do? Let's start from that place. And that's the love I share because um, our health is in, in an ecosystem of its own. So I really believe that you have to create that space through sound, through your body, and through your mind. Let's really explore that. Then we can talk about the food. Now you're opening your space about me telling you something that you've been holding on since you've been 12 years old or eight years old. <laughs> you try to take yeah. that away from somebody, you kind of get that feeling, right? So exactly. I just, you know, it may seem, if you follow me, you'll get it. <laughs> you'll get it. You'll get my happier, healthier life kind of approach to it. And the cookbook is on Amazon, From My Plate to Yours, Lunchtime Fix. Yes, because yes. you pick up our, our most calories during lunchtime. Most Americans do. It's when we eat our highest calories of food. Um, we go in or we skip in lunch and we're not taking in the nutrients. And no, most of the time, that food is fast food that we turn to for lunch. Mm. So I really wanted to focus in on lunch and create a system about how you eat through your whole lunch period. That little period between 1030 and 3 o'clock is crucial in your energy. And you want to make sure you're eating nutrients in that little block. And then all of a sudden, everything else will fall away because you've created a system within this little time period where you need to be your most productive. I love it. We'll put the links to your books in a bio. And then what is, your in- <laughs> what is your Instagram? Or what's your, what's your favorite social media platform that, for people to follow you on? Chef Kenny. Uh, Chef, uh, Chef Kenny on Instagram. That's where I'm all most right. Chef we'll Kenny. You. Thank you, Chef man. Kenny, thank you. Thank you. You are so great. You are so great. I am so excited and I'm definitely looking forward to the day that we meet. But more than the food, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking more forward to the hug because I just know you carry like goodness in